Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We are continuing to focus on our CNE snapshots for the next couple of sessions, and then we'll add a CNE CL snapshot as well. Looking at item analysis, because we know that several nurse educators struggle when it comes to this area. Go ahead and use as your reference for our snapshot during this session, uh, Billings and Halstead, you guessed it, Teaching and Nursing, Chapter 25, uh, looking at pages 486 through 490, honing in on analyzing test results, validity, and reliability. And then, of course, Dr. Caputi's CNE Review Book, Chapter 3, pages 58 to 64. Just as a reminder, about 19% of your exam is going to be inclusive of Competency 3, where item analysis falls underneath. Uh, this is related to using assessment and evaluation strategies. Now, you can almost be certain there's going to be a few questions on the CNE exam related to item analysis and exam analysis. You're going to need to spend some time memorizing key concepts, and we talk about several of those in our item analysis boot camp. We did launch that um, a couple of weeks ago, depending on when you're watching this YouTube segment. Uh, but either way, if you head over to drsellerseducate at gmail.com, just shoot us an email and let us know that you're interested in learning more about item analysis, and we'll be happy to share some information with you. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button so that you can receive notification and stay updated whenever we post new content um, by also clicking the bell. Okay, so subscribe and bell so you can receive that notification. There are additional resources listed in the um, intro information session related to this video. Um, but for purposes of our time together, item difficulty and item discrimination are two key concepts that I want to make sure you all understand. First, when we think about item difficulty, it's exactly as it describes. How difficult was that item? There's a difficulty index that you see here. This is the scale that's going to quantify for us the level or the interpretation of difficulty. For example, if the rating or the difficulty index is less than 0 0.30, it indicates that 30% of less than 30% of students answer the question correctly. That indicates that there is a high difficulty and we should revise that question. The opposite end of the spectrum is if the difficulty index is greater than 0 0.80, then it's way too easy because at least or more than 80% of the students get, did answer the question correctly. So we would want to revise that as well. We are ideally looking for the bell-shaped curve. Yes, we all have been educated about the bell-shaped curve. Uh, just a high-level overview. Again, this is directly from Billings and Halstead, figure 25.3. This is a sample test statistics report. We break this down in detail during our boot camp. And again, head over to drsellerseducate.gmail.com to find out more information about that. Now, when we look at these reports, we break them down in detail, but for purposes of our short time together, just want a couple, just want to highlight a few things. First of all, you see here this spike, the peak of our curve. You see here down here we have the median and the mode captured. Median and the mean captured, I should say. These are two key elements that you want to make sure you understand. Mean is simply the average, and then mean is going to be the number that reflects 50% above and 50% below the actual median score. Okay, so this is... Uh, key information that you need to understand from the report. Um, test reliability, 0.84 is good, right? We have talked about that previously. So 84% uh, re reliability is a, a very strong indicator that indeed we can trust and validate that students' knowledge and comprehension of the specific concepts associated or mapped back to our learning objectives and outcomes have been met. Standard area of measurement is a, a fairly new concept that some of you may not be most familiar with. We don't tend to look at this indicator a lot. However, we're not taking any content for granted for the CNE, so we do go in depth talking about that concept as well during our boot camp. Now, let's go ahead and wrap up with point by serial correlation coefficient. This reflects how well an item is discriminating. A high PBCC or PBI means that students selecting the correct response are those students that are high 
scoring students. Okay, so they perform well on the exam and students select being incorrect responses to an item or associated with lower scoring students. Okay, so if we see a negative point by seal index, it indicates that low scoring students or it discriminates the low scoring students from the high scoring students. We are looking for a mean of PBI of 0 0.20. Okay, that is an acceptable value. Let's go ahead and take a look at our scale, our item discrimination scale. Item discrimination is measured, quantified, or equated to PBCC discrimination index, or the you may see it as PBI. If we see a zero discrimination, there is such a thing that means that there's no discrimination, that everyone answered it correctly. That is not where we want to be. We want to be at least, again, 0 0.20. Is, and above is seen as satisfactory. It means that we can discriminate or differentiate between those students that scored well and not so well for the specific test item. Now, the degree to which test takers with high overall exam score selecting the correct option is what we see here. Okay, this is the correct option discrimination. A positive number, those students that scored high also answer correctly. If it's a negative, those students that scored low answer correctly. Okay, so we want our uh, item discrimination to always be positive, right? That's that's a good thing. Again, this has been Dr. Sellers, educated gmail.com. If you're tuning in prior to our Saturday, August 21st session, go ahead and send us an email so you can find out more information about our part two for item analysis boot camp. If you're tuning in after the date, that's okay. Go ahead and shoot us an email. These sessions have been recorded, so you won't miss a thing. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Have a great one.